keep your real estate working capital liquid, safe, and earning tax-free returns. In this educational episode, I'm going to talk about where should a real estate landlord deposit positive cash flow from rental income properties. Get ready, I'm gonna share with you what I have done and what many savvy real estate investors have also done with their rental income properties when they have positive cash flow. So my name's Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist, retirement planning specialist now for north of 48 years, helping many, many successful people optimize their assets, minimize taxes, empower what I call their authentic wealth. And I've helped many, many professionals who are successful in their various professions, whether they are uh, medical doctors or dentists. Many of them are uh, very proficient as contractors. But there's a lot of real estate investors, uh, no matter what they do, they own rental properties, or maybe that's their full-time profession. And uh, they come to educational sessions and I begin to teach them where they can keep their real estate working capital liquid, safe, earning tax-free returns, instead of doing what most uh, landlords do when they come, they say, well, uh, I have these rental properties and I've just always thought that uh, I would take the positive cash flow on the rental income because I don't need it yet. And uh, I'm going to plow it against the mortgage debt on the property to hurry as fast as I can to get the mortgage paid off in 15 or 20 years. Uh, thinking that's the best way to go, that maybe in retirement, uh, they will have these paid off rental properties that will then be giving them a rental income. And they think, oh, you know, it'll be paid off, so I'll be okay in case of a soft real estate market. Well, that sounds pretty good on the surface, but I could tell you horror stories about real estate landlords who have lost it all. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars when they lacked uh, liquidity during downturns in the market. Now. When we talk about owning real estate, uh, most people who are landlords understand the term leverage. If you don't, it simply means this is where you own and control assets like a rental property or a home or apartment complex or a commercial property, whatever. Uh, you own it and you're borrowing against it so that very uh, little of your own cash, maybe a 20% down payment or whatever, very little of your money is tied up uh, in the property and uh, you borrow the rest. That's called leverage. So maybe you borrowed 75% uh, loan to value. You coughed up uh, a down payment of 25%. Sometimes people will continue to uh, turn properties, sell them, do 1031 exchanges. And I've often see, uh, seen where they make mistakes. They think that when you do a 1031 exchange for another piece of property, uh, that that means uh, not only do you have to buy a like property to continue to defer paying a capital gain tax, but they think they have to uh, keep uh, the, the equity out of the sell of their former property and put it into a huge down payment into the new property that they're doing a 1031 exchange into. And that's not true. Uh, some people say, well, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you just pay all of it in there? Well, I like to maintain liquidity. See, uh, if you leverage without liquidity, I call that stupidity. And this is where most people get into trouble is they think they're so clever taking all of their positive cash flow and then putting it back into the real estate, uh, paying down the mortgage, or they leverage and they have no liquidity. They don't have any cash. And then what happens? You all of a sudden have a downturn in the market and it can happen within 60, 90 days and then they get stuck. Like I, I've said, I, I could tell you horror stories of different periods of times where the real estate market has crashed and people all of a sudden are way over leveraged and they go, well, <clears throat> I've got a whole bunch of equity in here. I've been sending uh, extra principal payments against the mortgage on this thing now for the last five, six, seven, 10 years. And uh, this piece of real estate's worth 2 million and, and uh, I, I only owe 700, 800,000 on it. Well, guess what? 
if uh, you have still a mortgage payment on that, uh, <laughs> It doesn't matter if you just plowed a whole bunch of extra principal. You can't tell the mortgage company, oh, uh, I calculate I'm, I'm now about 48 months ahead. I've been sending extra payments. The next mortgage payment is due. And if you don't pay it within 90 days, they can foreclose. And you try when you don't have enough tenants, you have vacancy, or when you uh, are hurting and you don't have enough income and uh, you're in any kind of a situation, maybe you're disabled, try to go borrow. See, because lenders uh, loan you money based on your ability to repay. It doesn't matter how much the, the property is worth. And if, if you don't have the ability to repay the loan because you're not renting it out, they're going to say, fat chance, I'm not going to give you the money. And so I've seen many, many people get foreclosed on because they will foreclose on you uh, within, you know, 90 days, they'll start that process if you're behind. And I've seen people lose millions of dollars of equity they built up by, by being illiquid and putting all of their positive cash flow into paying down the mortgage or, or um, paying huge down payments or what have you. I would recommend you have a very good liquid cushion to where that cushion could generate or pay the mortgage payments for a year or two, maybe even five years. So people say, well, that sounds good, Doug, but uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that money in a bank. Banks are paying, you know, a measly 1% or less. I'm going, no, I didn't say a bank. Uh, I'm recommending you put your re real estate positive cash flow uh, into your own, quote, bank, uh, where banks put your money when you deposit money into a bank or a credit union. And they go, well, where's that? I thought they loaned it out to people. I said, well, they do. But <clears throat> they have to keep a certain amount of money liquid and safe in case of a run on their bank. And in 2008, when over 400 banks went under and over 900 more were on the watch list, the federal government asked the five major banks in America to disclose where they had their tier one assets. That's money. They have to have liquid on hand and safe where they could access it if there was a run on the bank. Uh, where did they have that? And they disclosed that 30 to 40% of their tier one assets were invested in insurance companies. These insurance companies are usually rated uh, maybe five or six notches higher by let's say a rating agency like uh, S&P, Standard & Poor's, where sometimes banks may be rated triple B. Uh, these insurance companies are rated double A AA or triple A. Not only that, but banks are paying you 1% and the insurance companies are paying them four or 5%, which is four or five times what they're paying you. So they're coming out ahead, right? Just bypass the middleman. So my favorite repository for positive cash flow on rental properties is to take the positive cash flow and don't put it against the mortgage necessarily. Keep it liquid because if you, if you pay down the mortgage, there's only one way to get that money back and that's to borrow it back on their terms and prove there's a need why you should have it. And when you need it the worst, it's the hardest to get. Or if it totally paid off, there's only one other way to get it and that's to sell. And sometimes when you need to sell it, you have to drop down the price so low that you give up hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity because you're forced to sell it during a soft market. So I like to keep the positive cash flow very liquid and safe over in an insurance company. Uh, one of the last dominoes that would fall if the American economy totally collapsed. And I can access money if I need to with an electronic funds transfer phone call. And I can make up uh, uh, payments uh, or shortfalls if my property becomes vacant. I get into trouble. I need to fix it up. I don't have to qualify for a loan from anybody because the insurance company will let me withdraw my money or the insurance company will loan me the equivalent of my money and they'll loan it to you at 2%, even 4 or 5% and they'll keep crediting you maybe 7, 8, 10, 25%. That's what savvy real estate investors do. I have many clients who are very savvy landlords and they will use their laser fund, their IUL policies, as their working capital account. They put their positive cash flow from rents into that and they accumulate a million, two million. It could be 100,000, 200,000, but anytime they need money, they go, Doug, I need a million dollars to tie up another piece of property with an earnest money. They get that money within two days and they're able to access that. And I had a client do that in 2017, borrowed a million out of his policy at 5%. And uh, he kept earning 25% that year. So <laughs> he made a quarter of a million 
of interest tax-free on his million uh, while he actually borrowed a million from the insurance company using that money as collateral and they charged him five. So he made 250,000. They subtracted the 50,000 of interest out of that. He netted 20% or 200,000 on his million while he was using it where he made 3 million buying, fixing up and flipping a, 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 an apartment complex. Savvy real estate investors keep their money liquid, safe, and earning predictable rates of return. Most real estate investors, like me, if you borrow, maybe you're borrowing at 6%, but it's deductible interest on Schedule E or the LLC. 6% deductible interest in a 33% bracket is a net cost of four. Many laser funds, IUL policies, earn eight. How much more is eight than four? Don't say four, it's, it's, it's 100% more. So on every million dollars, you may be paying a mortgage interest out of your pocket of 40,000 a year in interest, but you're making 80,000, 100% more than that on your liquid account. So you're not losing ground by not paying down the mortgage. You're actually gaining ground by not giving it to the mortgage company. Does that make sense? So you want to be smart about your positive cash flow with real estate so you don't get into trouble when the mar real estate market gets soft. Does that make sense? So if you want to learn more about the laser fund and examples like this, I want to gift you a copy of our most recent best-selling book. This is flying off of our warehouse shelves. Uh, you do not have to pay $20 on Amazon for this. I will gift you a copy for free. Here's how you claim your free copy. You go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com or just click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that and I will pay for the book. It's 300 pages, 200 pages is this white side which is 14 chapters with all the charts and graphs and explanations of how the laser fund works. If you learn more by stories, you flip it over and read this one, which is 100 pages, 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories of how the laser fund is a working capital account, not only for real estate, business, uh, retirement, uh, your college funding for your kids and grandkids, on and on and on. It allows you to accumulate access and transfer your money totally tax free. And so claim your free copy. There's options there to listen and learn, watch and learn, and also check out some of the online educational webinars that we do. And you can even talk to a specialist that will help you understand how this may apply to your particular set of circumstances. And if you're a real estate landlord, look seriously at setting up one of these laser funds, uh, at least one of them, to accommodate your positive cash flow to maintain liquidity, safety, and earn rates of return that are probably double the net cost of the mortgage that you were sending uh, that positive cash flow to try to pay off. You'll actually get out of debt two and a half years faster by not giving it to the mortgage company, but by putting it in the laser fund, you'll have enough money compounding tax-free to actually pay off the mortgage on the real estate probably two and a half years faster than giving it to the mortgage company. You will learn about that in this book. So here is to your brighter future and being able to optimize your real estate even better.